All right, let's dive into this world of AI and language learning. Like we're uh, we're like sneaking into this awesome virtual conference about it. We've got these two experts, Zoe Hanley and Anna Nino, and their presentations are packed with info. Mm -hmm. Seriously, get ready to discover how AI is already messing with, I mean, like shaping the way we learn languages. Yeah. Yeah, even if you don't realize it. It really is. Okay, first myth to bust. When you hear AI, you think, what? Chat GPT, right? Right. But this whole idea of like machines using language and thinking, it's ancient history. Like way back in the 1950s. Yeah, way before the internet was even a thing. The, uh, the early AI folks, they were dreaming of these thinking machines long before we could actually, you know, build them. So how do we get from, like, robot dreams to, you know, Duolingo on our phones? Yeah, question. What's the deal with these large language models, these LLMs everyone's freaking out about? Break it down for us. Why do that matter for languages? Okay, so think of LLMs as, like, these super pattern recognizers. They've been fed tons of beta text code, everything. And they use it all to learn how language works, like all the little quirks and structures. So they can do things like write stuff, translate, even get kind of creative with language. It's wild. All the stuff we do online every day, emails, you know, TikTok, even just Googling stuff, it's all feeding the AI beast. Exactly. And that's where it gets interesting. AI seems magical almost. Right. But it's not actually thinking like us. It's just really, really good at spotting patterns and making predictions. Which explains why AI can totally mess up sometimes, right? Like, I saw this thing where people were trying to make AI draw a dozen eggs. Oh, yeah. Total fail. Like, it just couldn't figure out what a dozen eggs should look like. That's a good example. AI is great at specific tasks, but anything outside of what it's trained on, forget it. So, like, a brilliant but kind of clueless trend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what we call narrow AI, powerful but limited, artificial general intelligence where AI can learn anything like a human. Still a long way off. Okay, that makes sense. So let's get real. How is this narrow AI working in apps we use, like, every day? Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, even Grammarly. What's the AI magic going on there? Well, Duolingo, for example, that's AI making those practice sentences. Yeah, the ones that are sometimes, well, a little weird. Exactly. Like, sometimes they make you scratch your head. That's AI trying to mix it up and make it challenging. Keeps you on your toes. What about Rosetta Stone? That uses AI for speech recognition to check your pronunciation. Oh, cool. It compares you to native speakers and gives you tips to help with your accent and fluency. Like a little pronunciation coach in your pocket. And Grammarly. Grammarly uses AI to go through your writing, find mistakes, suggest better words, even help you sound more clear and get the right tone. Like a personal editor working 247. Seriously, I use Grammarly all the time. It's a lifesaver, but I totally forget there's fancy AI behind it all. Right. It's everywhere. We use AI daily without even realizing it. So, big question. Are these apps actually effective? Can AI actually replace a real live language teacher? Hmm. It's complicated. Right. The research is ongoing, but the potential is huge, especially for personalized learning and feedback. So not about replacing teachers, but giving them new tools to, like, supercharge their students. Exactly. AI can handle the drills, practice stuff, which frees up teachers for the human stuff, mm. conversation, cultural nuances, you know, that connection with students. Makes sense. Even in the stuff we read for this deep dive, uh, language teachers were struggling with how to actually use AI well in class. It's new for everyone. Definitely. And that's why AI literacy is so important for both uh, learners and teachers. Mm -hmm. We got to understand what AI can and can't do. So we use it strategically, not just blindly trust it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's talk machine translation. Okay. Tools like Google Translate, DeepL, those have blown up. But are they as good as they seem? Yeah. Can we actually trust them to, like, get the meaning right across languages? Well, machine translation has come a long way. And it's super useful for getting the gist, especially if you're a beginner. But, you know, even the most advanced AI, it still messes up the subtleties, like idioms, humor, cultural stuff. I remember when machine translation was hilariously bad. You could learn grammar from deciphering the mistakes. Has it really gotten that much better? Oh, it has. With LLMs, it's become much more sophisticated. It's still not perfect, but not like the old clunky translations, that's for sure. So it's about using it strategically, right? It's a tool, not a replacement for actually learning the language. Exactly. Think of it as a helpful assistant, not a crutch. You can use it to quickly understand something, double check your own translations, but it shouldn't be your only source of learning. 
I like that, a helpful assistant. So if we take this assistant into the classroom, how can teachers use it without letting students become dependent on it? Okay, let's say you're teaching Spanish and you want your students to understand cultural differences in uh, business etiquette between, let's say, Spain and the UK. You could have them translate a text on their own, then use a machine translation tool to compare. Hmm, interesting. It not only helps them understand the text, but also makes them think about the tricky parts of translation, especially cultural context. That's clever. It turns the machine into a learning opportunity, not just a shortcut. Yeah. It's about integrating it thoughtfully, not seeing it as a threat. It sounds like there's an art to using these tools well for teachers and learners. And it makes me think, with AI getting so good so fast, how do we even grade student work anymore? How do we know an essay or a translation was done by the student, not a machine? That's the million dollar question. Educators are struggling with this and there's no easy answer. Banning AI isn't realistic because it's, you know, it's going to be everywhere. So we adapt, not avoid. Yeah, exactly. We need to assess understanding and critical thinking in new ways, ways that go beyond just checking for AI generated content. Which brings us to another worry. Can we really trust machine translation that much? It's improved, sure, but is it truly reliable? That's where critical thinking comes in. We have to teach students to be smart about AI content. Don't just accept it blindly. Double check, think critically, and use your own judgment. So a healthy skepticism toward AI. Understand its limits. Use it as a tool for learning, not as a substitute for actual knowledge. Exactly. This isn't just about language learning. It's everything. AI is changing how we live, mm -hmm. and we're all trying to figure out how to navigate it. It's a journey, but it's pretty exciting, too. AI is opening up possibilities in language learning and communication that were, like, unthinkable just a few years ago. Definitely. And if we approach it with, you know, curiosity, critical thinking, and a commitment to ethics, I think we can use AI to make things better for everyone. I love that optimism. It's a much more empowering way to look at this whole tech revolution. But before we get carried away, remember, AI is still kind of young, right? Right. There's so much we don't know about its long-term impact, especially on language learning. You're right. We need more research to understand how these tools affect how we learn languages over time, both the good and the potentially bad. It's fascinating, complex stuff, and this conversation about AI and language learning is just getting started. But for now, let's take a breather, recap what we've learned so far. Sounds good. Okay. We started by breaking down what AI actually is. We talked about its history from those early thinking machine dreams to the powerful but limited narrow AI we have now. We dug into how AI is already in apps like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, and Grammarly, and how these tools can help teachers not replace them. Hmm. Then we tackled machine translation, talked about how to use it strategically and not just rely on it blindly. Right. And we touched on how to grade student work in this new world of AI, how to make sure we're testing real understanding, not just the ability to use AI. It's a lot to think about. It really is, but it's so important to you know keep learning and adapting as this technology keeps changing. So. Get ready to continue our deep dive. There's so much more to explore in this amazing world of AI and language learning. I can't wait. All right, welcome back. Ready for more AI and language learning awesomeness? This next part is like straight out of sci-fi. You're talking about that real-time translation stuff, right? Yeah. Like imagine talking to someone in a completely different language and understanding each other perfectly, like instantly, thanks to AI. Is that even possible? It's getting there. There are already apps and devices using AI to translate speech in real time. It's way smoother than anything we had before. Wow. Think about what that could do. Travel, business, international stuff, anything where people need to communicate across languages. Totally. It could help us understand each other better, work together globally, even connect with people we never could before. It sounds almost too good to be true. How does it even work? It's pretty advanced, but it's not magic. It's a bunch of AI tech working together. Speech recognition, machine translation, and then text-to-speech to actually say it out loud. So it, like, hears what you say, translates it, and then says it in the other language. Yep. And the AI's always learning, getting better. With all the advancements in natural language processing, these systems are getting more accurate and sounding more natural all the time. Mind-blowing how fast AI is changing. Mm. But there's more to language than just words and grammar, right? What about understanding the culture? Can AI help us, like, really get the cultural side of a language? So important. Language and culture are totally connected. 
To really understand a language, you need more than just vocabulary and grammar. You got to get the context, the nuances, the values behind the words. And AI can actually help with that. It seems so human. You'd be surprised. AI is being used to make these immersive cultural experiences that go way beyond, like, old school language learning. Okay, now you've got me curious. Give me an example. Imagine putting on a VR headset and suddenly you're in a busy market in another country. You're interacting with virtual people who speak the language, learning about their customs, even practicing your skills in a safe, fun environment. Wow, that's like traveling without traveling. You can learn about the culture firsthand. Exactly. It's not just about learning. It's about making it fun and engaging. When you're immersed in the culture, you understand the language so much better. Like a virtual field trip. Are there other ways AI can bridge that gap between language and culture? Definitely. AI can analyze how cultures use language, like the trends and patterns. Okay. It can give us insights into their values, beliefs, how they communicate, and help us avoid those awkward cultural mishaps. So it's like having an AI cultural guide to help you navigate all the complexities. Exactly. As AI gets smarter, I think we'll see even more creative ways to use it for cultural understanding, building bridges between people. It's a pretty exciting prospect. Let's talk about something else important, accessibility. How can AI make language learning and communication more accessible for everyone, no matter their abilities? Such a crucial question. Language barriers are even harder for people with disabilities. AI is helping develop tools to break those barriers down, making language more inclusive. What kind of tools? Well, speech-to-text and text-to-speech tech is making a huge difference. For people with hearing impairments, it's a game changer. They can follow conversations, participate more fully in spoken language. So someone who's deaf or hard of hearing could use this to have a conversation with someone speaking a different language, and the AI would translate it all in text. Exactly. And for people with speech impairments, AI can create synthetic speech that helps them communicate better. Some tech can even mimic their own voice, so it sounds more natural and personal. It's incredible how AI is giving people a voice they might not have had before. Right. And it goes beyond just communication. AI can make learning more accessible, too. There are platforms designed for learners with all sorts of disabilities, visual, hearing, learning disabilities. So they might have things like text-to-speech, screen readers, captions, adjustable fonts. Exactly. It's about making learning welcoming and accessible for everyone. It's inspiring how technology can break down those barriers and give everyone a chance to learn. Now, before we finish up, there's one more AI thing i got to ask you about. Okay, I'm listening. What about AI and, like, creating new languages? It's almost philosophical, like, AI being involved in the birth of a whole new language. It's definitely an area ripe for exploration. We're just scratching the surface. But there are already some really cool examples of how AI is pushing the boundaries of language and getting creative with it. Like what? Well, AI can create new words and phrases. It analyzes tons of existing language to learn the rules, the patterns, and then it comes up with new words that fit the grammar. So it learns a language so well that it can invent new words that sound like they've always been there, like AI is becoming a poet. In a way, yeah. Some of these AI-made words might sound weird at first, but they could really enrich a language, give it more ways to express things. Could AI even make a whole new language? If it can learn the rules, could it create a whole new system? Researchers are working on that. And there are already AI-generated languages being used in virtual worlds and games. They have their own grammar, words, even cultural meanings. Wow, that's wild. It's like AI is helping us imagine new worlds and new ways to communicate. What does it mean for AI to have that kind of power over language? Could it change how we think, how we talk, how we understand the world? You're asking the big questions. The connection between language and thought is deep. The idea that AI could shape how language evolves brings up all these philosophical and ethical issues. It's definitely something to think about. It feels like with AI and language learning, we're just at the beginning of something huge. Absolutely. And as AI gets more powerful, it, it's crucial that we talk about the implications, the good and the bad. We need to use it responsibly and make sure it's ultimately helping humanity, not hurting it. Couldn't agree more. This deep dive has been amazing. We've seen so many ways AI is changing the world of languages, and I'm ready for more. Let's keep exploring. All right. Welcome back for the final stretch of our AI and language learning deep dive. We've covered so much from personalized learning and real-time translation to AI, like creating new languages. Mind-blowing stuff. It really has been. Yeah. And we've seen how it's already changing how we learn languages, how we teach them, how we even use language to connect with each other. <laughs> 
But before we wrap things up, we got to talk about the potential downsides. Like any powerful tool, AI can be misused, right? What are some of the risks we need to be aware of as AI gets more and more intertwined with language learning? Yeah, good point. One big worry is that AI could make existing inequalities worse. Like what if only certain groups have access to the best AI language learning tools? So it could actually widen the gap between the haves and have-nots, even though it has the potential to make education more accessible. Exactly. And it's not just about access. We also need to think about the data that's used to train AI models. If the data is biased, the AI will be biased too. That makes sense. Like, if an AI model is trained on text that mostly reflects one culture or perspective, it might not understand or translate other languages and cultures very well. Exactly. We need AI systems trained on diverse, representative data, and we need to constantly check for and fix those biases. So it's not just about the tech itself, but also about ethics and human values. Absolutely. We have to develop AI responsibly, making sure it benefits everyone, not just a select few. Now switching gears a bit, I know a lot of people are worried about AI taking jobs. Will language teachers and translators like become obsolete as AI gets more advanced? Yeah, I understand that fear. It's likely that as AI gets more sophisticated, it will automate some tasks that humans currently do, but I don't think it will completely replace us. So it's not about humans versus AI, but about figuring out how to work together. Right. Instead of seeing it as a threat, think of it as an opportunity to, you know, redefine our roles and focus on the things that make us human, the things AI can't do. Like what? What are those uniquely human things? Things like empathy, creativity, critical thinking, understanding different cultures. AI's still got a long way to go with that stuff. So maybe AI could take over the more routine stuff like grading and lesson planning. And that would free up teachers to do more creative things, lead discussions, build relationships with students. Exactly. It's all about finding the right balance, the sweet spot between human expertise and what technology can do. A partnership, not a replacement. I like that. That's the idea. Yeah. I believe that this collaboration can make learning so much richer and more rewarding for everyone. I appreciate that optimism. But even with a positive outlook, it's kind of overwhelming how fast AI is changing. Feels like we're right on the edge of a huge shift in how we learn, teach, and use language. It's true. It's a time of change and there's definitely some uncertainty, but it's also exciting. AI has the potential to break down barriers, open up new doors, and ultimately make language learning better for everyone, more accessible, more engaging, more effective. This deep dive has been a wild ride. So much information, and I feel like we've only just started exploring. I agree. The world of AI and language learning is massive, and it's always changing. And we all have a part to play in shaping what it becomes. To everyone listening out there, keep exploring, keep asking questions, keep learning. The future of language learning is literally in your hands. And remember, AI is a tool. We get to decide how to use it. Let's use it wisely, ethically, to build a better world for everyone. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of AI and language learning.